Bidri. Uh, this session will be taken care by Dr. Somrat Goswami. I think for most of us and uh, uh, as well as for the participants, he uh, don't need any introduction. However, uh, uh, since our uh, uh, entry to the department and uh, since the inception of this program, he is supporting us as an expert. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, hope that he will also uh, uh, doing the same thing in the future also sir uh, welcome you once again and thank you for accepting our invitation uh, the floor is yours sir thank you sir thank you uh, good afternoon to all of you see i am uh, let me tell that i am not an expert first good afternoon <laughs> sir good afternoon nice to see you sir uh, thank you thank you yeah uh, i have uh, down the line whatever experience I have gathered in my research life, on the basis of that, I, I understood that it's very important to understand the basics. And it's not that always we have to be a kind of a mechanical, we have to think a lot. Okay. So unless and until we are very clear about what we are going to do, there is nothing that can help us. Okay, so from that point of view, I thought that maybe handling of data, particularly for social science people and others also, medical practitioners also, it's very important to understand the basics of statistics. Now, you know, I, I know that uh, you already had a class of Professor Shubir Shen. Shubir was talking about a descriptive statistics. Basically, we have two parts of a statistics. One is descriptive statistics, the other one is inferential statistics. Now, <clears throat> there is a big difference to where the descriptive statistics is applicable when you have data. So once you have collected data, you have the informations either in the qualitative format or in a quantitative format, then you can represent the data using a descriptive statistics, maybe in a textual format, maybe in a tabular format, maybe in a graphical format, maybe you want to get some idea about the data set and you can find out through calculating the central tendency, the central values as a representative value of, of you know, the entire data set. Maybe you want to know that how the values are varying from the central value, the, the way of you know, doing this through dispersions. Standard deviation is a method of doing that. <coughs> In case of univariate methods, univariate means where you have only one variant. If you have a bivariate kind of a situation, you have the data, you can use something like you want to know uh, in a complex world that what kind of degree of association is there in between you know, two variables or more than two variables. Then you need something like correlation. If you need to know about the causal relationship, you need a regression. Okay, so all of them are there. The other part of statistics is inferential statistics. Now, what is inferential statistics? Inferential statistics means you don't have a data. Prior to collecting data, you are planning about your study. Maybe that's a kind of a paper writing, writing of a paper, maybe doing an MPhil, MPhil dissertation, maybe a master's dissertation. Maybe you are doing your PhD for that. You are collecting, trying to you know, get some kind of a <clears throat> research problem and research design. So before collecting data, before uh, you know any kind of data requirement, any kind of you know, variable determination, you are thinking about how to do that work. Okay. So in that case, inferential statistics is helpful. And in all the cases, uh, I hope you have uh, had the classes on samples, right? Sampling and sample sampling methods and all. Isn't it? Sampling method was there. Sampling method is required because you cannot approach everyone to collect data. Census, census of India, census government of India, they collect, they approach everyone, all the households in the entire country. And that's why it takes such a long time, 10 years time to come up with a census report because they approach everyone, all the, all the families, they're, they're there. Now, it, as an individual researcher, as an institution, we cannot do that because that is costly, that is time consuming. Your research maybe that will not provide you that much time to collect data. 
and you know if data collection takes around two three years then obviously a long part is left before that after that so what we do we try to collect informations data from some of the representatives of the population and those representatives of the population in different way through non probability kind of a sampling or probability kind of a sampling that gives us a representative population that is known as a sample okay now before all this the inferential statistics actually talks about collecting information from the samples and on the basis of those informations that you have collected from the samples you are going to infer or conclude about the entire population so if you have a population of 1000 you thought that okay fine i will i will collect data from 25 25% of the population so you you collected data from 250 out of 1000 now whatever comment you are going to make that is on the basis of those information that you have collected from 25% of 1000 population but you are when you are making the comment when you are concluding you are concluding about the entire 1000 okay is it okay there comes the question of inferential statistics in inferential statistics broadly we have two types one is estimation the other one is hypothesis testing estimation is again when you have data but hypothesis testing is something where prior to collecting data you are making some inference you are making some statement you are making a framework and on the basis of the collected data you can check whether the statement that you have made earlier written or framed whether that is acceptable or not acceptable that is the very basic of hypothesis testing now i have written here t test using spss why i have written here because this hypothesis is something that you yourself have to write no software no statistical software can write the hypothesis on behalf of you it has to be framed by the researcher himself or herself now after framing that statement or hypothesis then there comes the question of certain kind of calculations statistical calculations there comes the role of any statistical software and that statistical software will tell you give you some guidance or some kind of a hint about what kind of data you have and what kind of result comes okay it's all about the calculations these statistical tools they will help you in calculating and telling the result and on the basis of that result you yourself have to interpret the interpretations statistical software and level okay so that's why the prelude is before t test t is a kind of a distribution it looks like a normal distribution but is exactly not like a normal distribution t distribution has certain characteristics okay sometimes in some uh, books you can see that okay if you have a small number of samples then you have to you have to go for <coughs> t distribution t, t test if you do not know the population parameter one of the parameter is population variance if it is not known to you population standard deviation is not known to you then you can go for t distribution but more important thing is that see that second point that i have written is just think think means think is not any statistical analysis think is neither any statistical analysis nor any software but it is before using any kind of statistical software what ground you are preparing for your research that is the thinking part. okay because the framing of any kind of a hypothesis has to have a clearly thought out idea otherwise unless and until you are framing the hypothesis or the statement in such a way so that it can be well guided well supported by a kind of information that you are collecting from samples now if i just let us have a small in interaction if i just just ask that why we need population 
Is there any reason? You can think. <clears throat> Particularly when we go for you know, the primary kind of a research, we look for a target population. And from that target population, with different uh, ways, probability type or non-probability type of sampling we apply and then we get a sample size. Okay, but why do we need a population? <clears throat> what do you think? It's just the interaction, nothing else. Discussion. And please feel free to reply back. Population has a characteristic. I just want to know that characteristic. See, in this room, we are eight persons are there in this room, here, inside, including me. Seven of you plus me. Okay. All of us, we are of different age. If you calculate the number of days also, all of us, we are not of the same age. All of us, we are not of the exactly same height. All of us, we are not of the exactly same weight, body weight. Maybe not exactly from the same economic background or income background. Okay, so there are differences. These differences are important. These differences are important means the, the population is heterogeneous in nature. As the population is heterogeneous in nature, that's why if you ask the same question to different, different people, you will get different answers. Unless and until you are getting different answers, it's meaningless to ask the same question to 100 people because every time you will get the same answer. Okay, I'm giving an example. Have you seen Bahubali? Bahubali movie? Now, what do you think? How, how was the movie? Anyone can reply. Was it good? What is, was it bad? Maybe the cinematography was good. Maybe the, the casting was good. Maybe it was very costly, big budget movie. You must have some kind of an observation. You ask this question to 18 years of age group people, you will get across the same kind of answer. Ask the same question to 30 plus group of people will get different type of answer, but the same people will give similar kind of answer who are around 30, 35 years old. Ask the same question to the set of people who are above 60, 65, you will get a different set of answer. But all the 60, 65 people, they will give the same kind of answer. That means if you ask, if you're asking the same question to same age group of people, you will get a single type of answer. There is no variation. If you ask the same question to the same income group, you will get a similar kind of answer. If you ask different age group people, different income group people, your answers will be different. Same question, you will get different types of answers. <coughs> that means there is a kind of a variability or heterogeneity in the population. And that's why population is so very important. We cannot capture the data from the entire population. That's why we try to find out the best possible representatives of the population where each and every member of the population has equal probability of getting selected. That will be the best possible sample. Okay, there is no subjectivity. In some cases, depending on the type of research, you can go for a non-probability sampling where you understand as a researcher that if you go for a non-probability probability sampling, you may not get the best possible samples that you actually expect. Okay, so I'm trying to highlight this thinking process. So if you can understand your target population very clearly, then you need to think for that. If you need to understand the problem that you are going to address very clearly, you need to think for that. Okay, so it is basically the thought process that gives you an idea that what kind of problem I'm going to, you know, uh, going to address, what kind of research questions I'm going to ask. 
what kind of statements I'm going to make, which is hypothesis. Okay. Now, t-test is actually used in hypothesis testing. Before that, let me tell that hypotheses are of two types. One part of hypothesis is known as null hypothesis, H0. The other part of hypothesis is known as alternative hypothesis. Sometimes it, it is written as H1, sometimes HA. And whatever statement you are writing in null hypothesis, exactly opposite statement you have to write in alternative hypothesis. And one more thing is that the rule of thumb is that whatever researcher believes that this is happening is going to be stated in your alternative hypothesis and whatever is not going to happen as, as the belief of the researcher is going to be your null hypothesis. This t-test, there are a number of tests. This t-test is a particular test that we generally perform when we try to address a hypothesis and try to see that whatever statement or conjecture has already been made, whether that is acceptable or not acceptable. That you are going to tell <coughs> with the help of the data. Okay, That is completely, absolutely done by pen and paper. But as you have a kind of a statistical software, then the statistical software will do a lot of things for you. Okay. Gradually, we will see what exactly is happening. See, the t-test is a basic test that is limited to two groups. That means you can have a single population. So you have framed certain kind of a research on that population. You have made some hypothesis and you are trying to see with the help of t-test that whatever hypothesis you have framed, whether that is acceptable or not acceptable. You are going to accept the null hypothesis or you're going to not accept the null hypothesis or reject the null. Rejection of null hypothesis means acceptance of alternative hypothesis. Okay, so this is on the basis of the population. It can be a single population, it can be two populations, it can be multiple populations. It can be a single population from where you have taken different different samples and you are comparing between samples. If it is a single population, then might be you can have a reference value you are trying to get the population value with the reference value. The samples, the sample information or sample statistic, we say, the sample statistic value and the reference value. In that way, also t-test can be done. The basic principle is to test the null hypothesis that the means of the two groups are equal. You have taken two different groups, maybe two cricket teams, their averages, their performances. Your hypothesis may be that, okay, these two teams are equal in terms of their performances. So what will be exactly opposite that? Opposite of that, these two teams' performances are not equal. Okay. <clears throat> One major assumption that we do in, in case of this t-test, that we assume that the data are normally distributed. Normally distributed means a parametric data. If you take a large number of uh, informations, large data set, then automatically we assume that the data are normally distributed. Normally distributed means it looks like a, you know, Mount Kilimanjaro. The the maximum point is at the middle of the point, uh, middle of the distribution, starts from the lower point, goes up, and then again goes down. Okay, that is a normal distribution, absolutely symmetric distribution. <clears throat> but we assume that. P test also assume that the underlying variances are equal. So if you take two different populations. The population will give you, first population will give you one variance, the second population will also give you another variance. We assume that the two variances are the same. That means the populations are similar in nature. There is a similarity between the two populations. If you take more than two populations, five, six, seven populations, then for each of them you will get a variance. And after calculating the variance for each of the population, you will assume that all the variances for taken from different different population, they are same. They are same. That is another assumption. T tests are employed when only two sets of measurements are to be compared. You cannot take a lot of measurements together. Okay, two by two, one by one measurements are. Either you are you know measuring the income of two different groups of people, 
maybe you have identified that below poverty line people in tripura and below poverty line people in mizoram now what exactly their per capita income or what exactly their average income average income for from tripura below poverty line average income from uh, mizoram below poverty line you are you are actually comparing these two. you cannot take all the variables at a time okay that is not possible this is possible for one variable at a time <clears throat> in case of a single sample the set of measurements are compared with some reference value as i was telling that okay fine maybe a quality control issue is there now if a quality control issue is there a measurement or reference value has been given that okay fine if your product is below this limit then we are not going to accept your product if your product is at par or above that limit then we are maybe thinking of accepting your product so that is also possible by using a t test what is the significance the t test is often used in hypothesis testing as we are discussing to determine whether a process or treatment actually has an effect on the population of interest whether two groups are different from one another so we are studying two different groups sample sizes uh, the samples are from different groups taken from different groups you are trying to understand or trying to estimate that okay fine if these two samples are having some similarity maybe we can conclude that the populations are also having the same kind of similarity because the best possible samples we have chosen from two different populations okay <clears throat> i think this part is known i have you used spss Anyone of you have used SPSS earlier? Okay, then I can tell. The full form is statistical package for the social science. It's a flexible and comprehensive statistical analysis and data management solution. It's a computer program used for survey authoring, deployment, data mining, statistical analysis, collaboration, and deployment. It can take data from almost any type of file and use them to generate tabulated reports, charts, plots, descriptive statistics, and complex statistical modeling. Using SPSS, <clears throat> statistical modeling means we do equations. Okay, Equations means basically we generally perform certain regressions. Now, that can be an OLS regression, simple regression, which is known as a simple linear regression model. We can do that. We can go for binary logistic regression where the the dependent variable itself is binary in nature yes or no male or female okay so in that way have you ever attended any training or not yes i have attended a training or not attended a training so this can be your dependent variable when your dependent variable of this type are of this type then you can use for logit or tobit or probit kind of a regression depending on the structure of the uh, the model you are thinking about <laughs> SPSS was developed by Norman H. Nye and C. H. Hull of IBM Corporation. See, I can also okay. tell this. Come, I can also tell this that how these people have developed a kind of a statistical software. How can one develop a statistical software? He has to have a pure knowledge of that soft i mean uh, of of statistical analysis he has to have or the people who have done that has to have a pure knowledge of computer science but what else is required at capital word think without thinking you cannot come up with an applicable and publishable solution right so that's why I was, uh, I, I, I always tell, even in the coursework class also, that your coursework will start from the process of thinking. That will give you an idea. Okay, you have to have, you just carry a piece of notebook and a pen so that whenever, whatever you think, whatever comes in your mind, maybe that is very negligible in nature, but you have to perform that, you have to write, it, write that down because maybe in the next time it will never come in your mind okay we also do that <clears throat> so if we are you are using you are going to use spss then how you will enter the data in the spss the data editor
has two parts. One is a data view. So you will open an IBM SPSS, then it will come, a data editor will come. It has two parts. One is a data view, just like an Excel spreadsheet. The other one is a variable view window where if you are really requiring to you know, enter the data directly in the SPSS, then you will require the variable view window. Data view window displays the data in a spreadsheet format. Variable view window displays a metadata or information about the data because you are entering the data in a so better kind of a software than Excel <coughs> where all sorts of information about the data is required. Why this is required? See, whenever you are thinking about any particular objective of your study, you are making a hypothesis. Now testing that hypothesis may require a model. So you are thinking about a particular methodology. And once you are thinking about a particular methodology, in that case, that methodology requires different types of variables. Okay, so you have to identify the variables. That okay, fine. I am thinking about this model. What variables are required for this model? Now, these variables are not only required, but you have to understand that these variables for for these variables, the responses will be our data. I, I need to know the age. So I will ask, what is your age? You will tell, I will write that. That is the response. That is how the data will come. What is your income? You will tell, I will write that. That is how the income data will come. Are you married or unmarried? You will tell either married or unmarried. That, that way the data will come. <clears throat> but the requirement is from the model itself. So you have to be clear about the methodology that you are actually going to deploy. And for that methodology, the variables you have to identify and the variables in which scale, nominal, ordinal, ratio scale, which scale, that is also important because all the models do not consider, do not accept all sorts of variables in all sorts of scale. Okay, it requires some scaling. So the scales have to be accepted, accepted or you know, thought out clearly. And in variable view, you can write all these things specifically that what is the variable name, what type of variable is this, what will be if it is a kind of a you know a numeric figure, then do you need a decimal? If you need a decimal, then how, how much point of decimal you are requiring? All these things will be there. It is there. <coughs> Easiest one is the data can be imported from Excel files also. So if you have an Excel, Excel data set, then you can directly import in SPSS from that. Importing data from Excel spreadsheets into SPSS. How? In SPSS, go to open the SPSS first. Go to file, then open, then data, then select the type of file from, for example, from Excel, you are going to you know, import the data. You want to open select file name, you want to open. That will come. Okay. Open data, then, you know, this dialog box comes then data from hell to heaven, let's say. <clears throat> that is the file, Excel file is there. You are opening that, it's very easy. That's how it looks like. See, this SPSS data, data view, the data view window shows that the first one is always the name of the variable. Now these are the values, so any spreadsheet each of the column are the variable columns. Each of the row are the respondent row. That means whatever questions, 20, 30 questions you are asking, you are filling up one entire row for 20 or 30 variables. Okay. Now, if you have calculated, if you have collected data from 100 people, then the first column, the same variable, 100 responses. Second column, same variable, 100 responses. Third column, same variable, 100 responses. Okay, so the columns are the variables, rows are the responses, respondents. First respondent, second respondent, third respondent, and so on. It will look like this. Group, age, gender, HT, weight, height, weight, HCT, etc., etc. This is a variable view window. Variable view window in SPSS, see? 
name of the variable is there what type of variable whether it is a numeric or string kind of a variable what will be the width of the variable if you require decimals or not that is also you can give labels can be given values or can also be given whether you have to uh, mention here whether for any particular uh, variable whether you have a missing data or not some sometimes it may so happen that you are asking a question particular question to individual some of the individuals they are replying but some of the individuals they are telling that no we don't have any idea about that data so that is missing for them so if you have a missing data you have to mention there that that particular data is missing see there is there is written none 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 that means all the data the entire spreadsheet is filled up see? all the data are filled up <coughs> this i think i have shown now let's go to the t test okay i'll give you the examples <clears throat> there are certain tests steps where we start with the easiest one that starts with single mean we have only one mean value we will start with that so you have a you have a population target population from there you have collected selected samples from the samples you have selected data collected data and from the data you have come up with a single mean value mean you know average value okay <clears throat> the first step is to write the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is h dot mu equal to mu not mu not means a particular value the value that you have obtained from collecting the data okay and the second step is framing the alternative hypothesis where it tells that if mu is equal to mu not what is exactly opposite to that mu is not equal to mu not if i tell that okay fine <clears throat> the value of this particular mobile is 20000 rupees so if it is not true then it is not equal to 20000 rupees now how can it be not equal to 20000 rupees if it is 21000 rupees then also it is not 20 not equal to 20000 rupees if it is 18000 rupees then also it is not equal to 20000 so two possibilities are there either less than 20000 rupees or greater than 20000 so alternative hypothesis is either not equal to or greater than or less than <coughs> Now, in this case, we told that the data that we are going to collect from the population are normally distributed. Now, normal distribution is, looks like a symmetric distribution, it's like a mountain. And mountain is having two different sides. We call them two tails. Okay. Now, these two tails, when there is an inequality in the alternative hypothesis, then we have to go for a two-tailed test because it can lie on either of the sides. If it is less than 20,000, then also it is uh, applicable. If it is more than 20,000, then also it is applicable. So you don't know exactly on which direction it is actually locating. That's why you have to take a two-tailed test. <clears throat> Second and third one, mu greater than mu naught or mu less than mu naught is one-tailed problem. Okay, now <clears throat> let's say uh, a track company is negotiating with a tire company. The truck will come up with, a, with tire, along with the tire also. The tire company tells that, okay, fine, the tire that I'm selling you, I'm going to sell you, it will run for 40,000 kilometers. Then maybe something will come. Okay, now this is their conjecture, tire companies. The truck company will tell that, okay, fine, you're telling that's good, but I'll definitely check some of the tires. So he has taken certain samples, maybe 20, 30 samples they have taken, and they are running with that uh, those company's tires. Then after running, <coughs> the tires will longer for a time. Then they will collect the data, uh, which particular tire lo uh, long for a particular time period, then they got a mean value of that. That is a sample mean. 
and then they will see statistically see that whether the kind of statement made by the tire company is acceptable or not okay so that is mu greater than mu not was their conjecture tire companies that okay fine it will be more than 40000 km the life period of average lifetime of the tire is more than 40000 maybe in case of the the last one mu less than mu not maybe that is in case of any kind of let's say uh, pathological test or something like that that whether uh, a group of people they are diabetic or not the value of mu has to be less than mu not whether that is happening or not that can be found out that can be find out when you got the data about their values individual values okay blood blood values okay now third step is checking assumptions what is the assumption the population from which the sample drawn is assumed as a normal distribution keep on telling that for that there is a test that is a shapiro wilkes or QQ plot test. Okay. And we know the population variance sigma square is unknown. Generally, in most of the cases, the population variances are unknown. You can't have that much data at a national level or state level. So you have to pretend that you have to take a proxy of population variance as a sample variance. Whatever sample you have collected, selected from them, you got a data. So you can easily find out the sample variance. So in case of t-statistics, generally what we do, we take the sample variances as a proxy of population variances because you don't have our data on population variances. Step four, test statistics, that is the t and p value. T value for t-test, p value it gives this particular a space is gives, p is a probability value. Okay, that probability value, you can also check and can see that whether the kind of statement you have made, the data is actually supporting that statement for acceptance or rejecting. Okay. Step five is conclusion. What is the conclusion? <clears throat> In terms of p-value, if p is less than or equal to the level of significance, then we will reject the null hypothesis. If the p is greater than level of significance, we will fail to reject. That means we will accept the null. That is the probability value. Probability value is less than or equal to level of significance means you are going to reject the null hypothesis. If that is greater than the level of significance, then we are going to accept the null hypothesis. <coughs> There's an example. Let's say based on field experiments, a new variety of green gram is expected to give an average yield of 12 quintals per hectare. So green gram has been cropped. And expectation is the average yield will be 12 quintals per hectare. Hectare is a large space. The variety was tested on 10 randomly selected farmers field. So that was a that was a kind of a proposition that has been told. So now statistician or researcher wants to see that exactly that whether that is happening or not. How I can see, I have selected randomly 10 different farmers and calculated how much green gram they have produced. Okay, so these are the values, 14.3 yield per quarter, uh, quintals per hectare. The yield quintals per hectare were recorded as 14.3, 12.6, 13.7, 10.9, 13.7, 12, 11.4, 12, 12.6, 13. .9. These 10 values are there. This file name, it's actually there was a file where this Excel file it was there. So I am not showing you that because this machine probably is not having SPSS. I need an SPSS to show that. Okay, but things are there. Now, does that do the results confirm the expectation? Expectation was 12 point, quintals per hectare. Let's see. <clears throat> Step one. What will be the null hypothesis? The value has been stated as 12 quintals per hectare. See the null hypothesis is H0 is mu equal to 12. Okay, so what will be average yield is 12 quintals per hectare. So the alternative hypothesis is mu not equal to 12. It can be less than 12, it can be greater than 12. <coughs> that means it's a two-tailed test. 
okay it can be either side of the 12 mean value is 12 it can be larger than 12 it can be lower than 12 volts what you will do when you will open your spss then you will go to analyze then descriptive statistics then you will go to explore okay because before testing the t t test before doing a t test you need to do something else also analyze <coughs> descriptive statistics explore then you will get this dialog box in the explore dialog box see there is a yield that is the only variable we are concerned so we have yield variable what you are doing you will import this yield into the dependent list okay just if you select yield click on the right arrow it will come to the yield list then click on plots this will come explore plots then factor levels together you have in the box plot you have to tick the factor levels together and obviously the normality plot with tests that means it's it, it will give you not only the value but also the distribution the plot will also be given then you have to continue so you wanted to see first that whether the data that you are talking about is normal or not because what is the problem here the problem is you have selected only 10 10 samples it's highly probable that the 10 samples cannot formulate a kind of a normal distribution. So we are assuming that the farmers, all the farmers, they are normally distributed and we have taken samples from the normally distributed population. Okay, so whether this is having a normality or not, first exploring is that test. We are exploring for that test only. The result tells see the statistics is this significance shapiro will test if you remember that we have mentioned that whether normality is there or not for that we are going to conduct a shapiro will test that is the shapiro will test the last one significance it tells 0.891 now this 0.891 obviously this is greater than 0 0.05 value of 0.891 is greater than much greater than 0 0.05 that means yield of green gram is normally distributed so you are checking whether it is normally distributed or not it is normally distributed <coughs> this is the qq plot observed value expected normal there is a straight line that is the estimated straight line and those points are the real values you are just trying to see whether <coughs> these points are fragmented from the straight line or they are close to the straight line. See, most of them, they are close to the straight line. There is a pattern, a very less, uh, not prominent, but there is a pattern. Three on the up, three below, and the middle one is almost on the line itself. Here the points are almost close to the line, so we can say that the yield of green gram is normally distributed. Normal distribution has been accepted okay, from the test as well as from the QQ plot. Now the second step, step four. Now you are going to calculate the T test. Okay, conduct the T test. Then go to analyze, compare means. Because all the values that you have for the 10 samples, 10 farmers, it was the, the, the yield value. Okay, so you are going to compare the means. Compare means one sample t-test. Why one sample t-test? Because you had only one population. There is only the farmers. And from those farmers, you have taken 10 samples. Okay, it's not that. From this department, we are, uh, had it been like from... IT department and from MBA department, we have two different populations. We are only having a, this, this IT department is the only population. Then we have only compare means of one sample test. The representation has been given that it will be 12. We want to see that whether it is 12 or not. Okay, that is our objective. One sample t-test. 
again for one sample details you will get this again you have the data on yield you will go to this test variables shift this yield to the test variables click on this and automatically test value is 12 that has been given that it will be it will be 12 the average will be 12 this is the output one sample statistics one sample test so the step five tells that the test statistic t value is 1.836 second table second column last row 1.836 with degree of freedom 9 and the p value is 0 0.100 significant two ten p value see the first second third fourth one fourth column now 0 0.100 is definitely greater than 0 0.05 in terms of numerical value therefore <clears throat> we have to accept the null hypothesis we see we fail to reject the null hypothesis at five percent level of significance now do you know what is this this level of significance because that is also something you have to know Anyone having any idea or prior idea that what is level of significance? Have you heard about this? We have assumed that the population is normally distributed. Now, what we do, level of significance is probability of committing a type 1 error. There are two possible errors that can come out. One is a type 1 error, the other one is a type 2 error. That means, if you have accepted a true null hypothesis, that is correct. If you have rejected a false null hypothesis, that is also correct. But if you have accepted a false null hypothesis, that is a type 1 error. If you have rejected a true null hypothesis, that is a type 2 error. So, level of significance is a probability of committing type 1 error and that tells that in the normal distribution there must be a rejection region you have to have a demarcation on the left side of the demarcation you are going to accept the null hypothesis on the right side of the demarcation you are going to reject the null hypothesis now 0 0.05 is much lower than 0 0.10 that means 0 0.10 is a higher value than 0 0.05 Therefore, it comes within the acceptance region for null hypothesis and we are going to accept the null hypothesis on the basis of the information or data that has been collected from 10 different farmers. See, thus new variety of green gram is expected to give a yield of 12 quintals per hectare. There is a hectare per hectare. That is one example. There is another example. A researcher is investigating hemoglobin levels of school school girls in a particular area. Now, 15 school girls was, were randomly selected and their hemoglobin level is as follows. So, data has been collected. Does the data reveal that average hemoglobin level among school girls is more than 11.5? You are going to test this at 5% level of significance. This level of significance has another kind of name which is known as a confidence limit if you have five percent level of significance that means you are 95 percent confident if you are having one percent level of significance that means you are 99 percent confident okay if you have 10 percent level of significance generally we do not consider 10 percent level of significance that is too much then you are 90 percent confident so these are the values 11.9 11.5 and all these values are basically the hemoglobin level of those 15 school children school girls and we have to see that whether it is more than 11.5 or not again the same steps step one is a null hypothesis you are forming a null hypothesis which is here mu equal to 11.5 that has been given to us 11.5 is the value now what was the problem Thus, the average level of your school girl is more than 11.5. More than 11.5 means it is a 
wanted test mu greater than 11.5 average hemoglobin level is more than 11.5 okay what you have to do you have to check the normality first whether the data is a normal data or not if it is not normal data then your entire standard statistical methods will not be applicable if it is normal then it is parametric if it is not normal then it is non parametric if you have a non parametric data then a different set of methods has to be applied okay so that's why the checking of normality is so so very important so again the same steps descriptive statistics explore if you are exploring then the same thing will come explore hb hemoglobin that comes then factor levels together normality plots with the test same steps will will be continued the result will come that is the last one 0.505 now the probability value we are we are checking at 0.5 level of significance so 0.505 is much higher than 0.05 isn't it that means the data of hemoglobin level among 15 girls is normally distributed what is the qq plot shows see the qq plot shows that many of the most of the values are very close to the straight line estimated line that means they are normal the data are normal distribution is normal then the next step go for the t t test statistics analyze compare means again this is a one sample test because from one school only you have taken different different children again hemoglobin it will come here you just write okay the result will come see the value is minus 1.301 the t value and p value is 0.214 for 210 therefore p value for one tail will be 0.214 divided by 2 that is 0.107 which is greater than 0.05 why we are dividing it by 2 so <coughs> see this p value is for a two tail that means if you are considering both the tails the p value considering both the tails is 0.214 but your problem is a one tail problem because the hemoglobin level is more than 11.5 greater than 11.5 so in the second stage p value for one tail you are dividing the two tail p value into one tail p value that is 214.214 divided by 2 that is 0.107 okay and obviously 0.107 is also higher than 0.05 so again we fail to reject the null hypothesis at 5% level of significance and the answer is average hemoglobin level among school girls is not more than 11.5 not more than 11.5 now if you have two means what will happen earlier there was one mean and one value has been given considered either 12 quintiles or 11.5 hemoglobin now you have two means that means you have two populations and you are trying to compare these two populations then obviously the null hypothesis will be that the mean two means will be equal and the alternative hypothesis will be the two means will not be equal or one mean mu1 is greater than mu2 or mu1 is less than mu2 these are the possibilities okay these three are the possibilities either two tail or upper tail or lower tail okay. so again there will be a assumption checking will be there <clears throat> same thing the population from which two samples drawn are assumed to be normally distributed in case of earlier examples there were one population now in this case there are two populations others will remaining same the statistics we will find for t and p value and the conclusion will be if p is less than equal to level of significance we will reject the null hypothesis if p is greater than level of significance we are not going to reject the null hypothesis these are the formulas these formulas are available everywhere in any standard statistical textbook you will get these formulas
the first example here like in a fertilizer trial the grain yield of paddy kg per plot was observed as follows now one particular person he is using one particular farmer is using ammonium chloride for getting nitrogen the other one is urea okay so the person who is using ammonium chloride she's output paddy per kg is 42 39 38 60 41 and the person who is using, using urea he uses the second set of numbers 38 42 56 64 68 69 62 see there are mismatch between the two data first one is less second one is high larger than the first one is that going to be a problem if you do not have the similar sample size will that be a problem no because you are going to use the mean only so whatever if you have only two values then also you will be having mean for the first one but you have uh, five and the second one is seven find whether there is any difference between the sources of nitrogen that means whether these two different uh, fertilizers they are providing the same amount of nitrogen to the crops or not paddy or not first one is you have to set up the null hypothesis the null hypothesis automatically is mu1 equal to mu2 that means there is no difference okay we are telling technically that mu1 equal to mu2 but mu1 equal to mu2 has a meaning because ultimately you have to come back to your statement and to write in terms of a statement itself so if the question is statement the answer will also be state in between you are using certain statistical data mathematical data quantitative or qualitative data and come up with a conclusion which is statistically significant or statistics statistically supported again to conclude the, about the you know the the write-up okay see in the in the in the bracket it is written there is no significant difference between the sources of nitrogen obviously the alternative hypothesis will exactly be the opposite one where mu1 is not equal to mu2 is again it's a two-tailed problem and there is no significant difference between the sources of nitrogen that has also been said so first thing to check the normality again there is a descriptive statistics explore go to the explore here you have two different types of variables because you have two samples one is chloride the other one is urea now what you will do you will write in one independent list the other one is factor list okay what what will be dependent list what what variable will go to the dependent list the thing which you are measuring what you are measuring you are measuring yield of paddy in kg per plot that you are measuring and what are the variables factors factors are the two fertilizer two different fertilizers okay yield is a dependent list and factor list is fertilizer whether fertilizer factor is creating any difference or not in terms of in the yield or not okay again go for a factor level together normality of the plots this is the result for ammonium chloride probability is 0.967 very high very high over 0 0.05 level of significance so data of yield of paddy under ammonium chloride is normally distributed obvious normally distributed when the p value is very high you will see that almost all the points will be almost on the straight line okay if the value is low that will be little scattered okay. for urea the p value is 0 0.172 which is obviously greater than 0 0.05 that means the data yield of paddy under urea is also normally distributed qq plot see there are differences first one is ammonium chloride the second one is urea now go for p value and t value so compare means independent 
samples t test earlier one was one sample t test this one is independent sample t test you have yield and fertilizer what you will do your output is yield so the test variable is yield here what is the grouping variable two groups are there one is ammonium chloride the other one is urea so fertilizer is a grouping variable see the result levens <laughs> test for equality of variances f value is 9.872 and significance is 0.10 before testing equality of two means we have to test equality of two variances remember the second or third assumption was that if you have more than one population then we are assuming that the variances of the populations are remaining same first was first assumption was that the populations are normal second assumption was that the variances of the populations they are same okay so first we what we tested we have tested the normality of the population second we have tested this one is the variances we have to test equality of the two variances here the test statistics f value is 9.872 and p value is 0.010 now what is lesser 0.01 or 0.05 0.01 is lesser than 0.05 therefore here we are going to reject the null hypothesis at 5% level of significance that we had two populations two different fertilizers and paddy uh, output was there the two population variances are not same that means you are violating the assumption see the output in the same Uh, same table here the test statistic t value is minus 3.58 and p value is 0.011 now this 0.011 is less than 0.05 that is clear therefore we reject the null hypothesis at 5% level of significance that is that is obvious you know if the assumptions are not maintained properly obviously you are violating from the assumption your model is not going to be sustained first you are with your assumptions if the all the assumptions are made then you can see that there can be a possibility of accepting the null hypothesis but once one of your very important assumption is being violated then how can you be sure that after that also you can accept your null hypothesis that is generally not in some rare cases with unique data it, it may be possible thus there is <coughs> difference in the <coughs> yield of paddy because of sources of nitrogen is this is this clear is this clear two sources of nitrogen were there farmers are using two different types of fertilizers so the hypothesis was that whatever fertilizer you are using ultimately the source of nitrogen is same for that we had two basic assumptions one is normality the other one is similarity of equality of variances normality is there but equality of variances did not stand okay so here this t test tells that whatever comment you have made whatever assumption i mean framework you have made the statement you have made in terms of that hypothesis that is not accepted second example researchers wished to know if body temperature of males is less than that of females it's very very easy you know kind of understanding queries that okay whether the body temperature of male is higher than or lower than the body temperature of female so he has taken 51 different females and 49 males and measured their body temperature simple data collection okay what should be the researchers conclusion so first is the forming of null and alternative hypothesis let mu1 be the average body temperature of male and mu2 be the average body temperature of females now obviously the null hypothesis will tell that mu1 is equal to mu2 
alternative hypothesis tells that mu1 is less than mu2 why if body temperature of male is less than that of female that was given in the problem that was given in the statement so alternative hypothesis is basically one tailed hypothesis it's not equal to there is no question of equal to or not equal to equal to is there but alternative hypothesis you are framing on the basis of the problem that has been stated where it has been stated that the average body temperature of male is lesser than the average body temperature of female now let's see whether the assumptions hold true and the tests are done properly again you are checking for the normality same thing descriptive statistics explored now you have gender age heart rate temperature all these things are there out of that what you are taking you are you are interested about the body temperature so you have taken body temperature as a dependent list and factor list is gender because you are differentiating between the male and female so gender is the factor don't put opposite things okay i mean if you put temperature as a factor and gender as a dependent list it will give you a result but you cannot in interpret that result see test of normality tells that p value is 0.721 this is 0.721 this is not 721 721 is not possible 0.721 which is greater than 0.05 level of significance so data on the body temperature of female is normally distributed 0.135 which is greater than 0.05 again the body temperature data on of body temperature of female male is also normally distributed so first assumption is clear this is the box plot this is the qq plot see you have more data now earlier you had either 10 or 5 or 12 that kind of data now you have more data 49 51 so a kind of a cluster kind of a trend you can find out that the similarity is there now you are going to calculate the t test or test statistics for that so compare means will be there because you have two means then again independent sample t test you can you have to go for that again you will take temperature and gender temperature at a test variable and gender as a grouping variable because you have taken the data in terms of group how you have grouped them in terms of gender data for male data for female before testing equality of two means we have to test the equality of two variances here the test statistics tells that a value is 2.248 and p value is 0.137 now this 0.137 is greater than 0.05 level of significance it means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis at 5% level of significance therefore variances are equal so now you have got a variance which are equal two sets of populations where the variances are equal last last one the variances were not equal see the result test t value tells that 1.353 p value is 0.177 by 2 which is 0.0885 again 0.08 is greater than 0.05 so we fail to reject the null hypothesis at 5% level of significance therefore body temperature of male is not less than that of female which is actually you cannot say in that way i mean if you take a even larger data if you take larger data you have more normality so it's likely that more uh, equality in variances will also come so that will tell that i mean gender wise that is generally not possible you cannot say with surety that you know the body temperature of female will be larger than the body temperature of male on average that is generally not possible that also depends sometimes on the samples that from where how much sample you have taken instead of taking 49 and 51 if you could have taken <coughs> maybe 18 and 20 18 and 20 maybe the result could have been different okay so if you take more values it will likely to be a normal 
distribution is likely to be a norm okay and if it is normal then obviously it will be more to the you know very close to the estimated value that means close to nearly uh, towards the genuinity there is another variation that is pair t test pair t test means there are certain steps for that null hypothesis is d equal to 0 alternative hypothesis d not equal to 0 d greater than 0 or d less than 0 now what assumptions we do have the difference between the two samples are normally distributed where you need again shapiro wilkes test and qq plot the difference between the two samples are independently distributed and the two samples are independently distributed so on not only the samples are independently distributed, but also there are differences are also independently distributed. What exactly is happening? You know, we are doing, keep on doing this T-test, 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 different variations are there. But see, we have started with the easiest one. And we are moving towards a complex kind of situation. Think about your study, your career. You started with, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, then gradually you know, trigonometry, then algebra, then calculus, then, you know, this dynamics, dynamic optimization, etc. That means wherever you will move from the basics, you are actually moving to the complex kind of a situation. Real life is much complex than our theoretical life. That means when you are engaged in a complex research war, you have to take care of many variables at a time maybe who are very complexly related to each other that's why we have started from the easiest type of t-test and we are gradually moving to the little complicated type of t-test where you are considering a lot this is a better version or higher version of that t-test for the means of two dependent samples now the step four is the test statistics again we have to find out the t and p value and again the same logic in the conclusion will be applicable that p is less than equal to level of significance means you are rejecting your null hypothesis and p is greater than level of significance means you are not going to reject your null hypothesis and as example that iron contents of fruits before and after applying farm yard manual was observed the fruit number one two three four ten fruits were there now before applying 7.7 8.5 and all this and after applying you have a separate value for that. Is there any significant difference between the mean iron content in the fruits after applying the farm yarn manual? Manual. We will say that the null hypothesis d equal to zero, and the alternative hypothesis d not equal to zero. See the things written in the bracket. That is important. There is no significant difference between the mean iron content. So. You are talking about the mean iron content. Why? Before applying and after applying a certain kind of a manual. So, manual application of manual is what is the intervention? That the intervention is application of manual and that make the changes in terms of the iron content within the fruit. And you are measuring 10 different fruits. For them, you are trying to get some idea about the change in the iron content is taking place or not due to the applications or not applications of the values. Obviously, the alternative hypothesis is, is, is not equal to zero, which tells that it is a two-tailed problem, one-tailed and two-tailed problem. First is a normality check, compute variable. What you are going to do here, compute variable. In, in compute variable, uh, there is a before after kind of a situation okay and for that in numeric expression you have to write before dash after dash before now go to the des descriptive statistics then explore before after difference okay so you can get a difference if you have before and after values you will get a difference so here in the dependent variable dependent list you just write 
difference that you have calculated earlier here you have calculated the difference after minus before same factor levels together normality plots with the tests this is going to be your result for difference p equal to 0 0.536 is higher than 0 0.05 so data of difference is normally distributed you had two data one is before the other one is after you have calculated a third one and you are actually testing the third one that is the difference see the data difference is normally distributed you are not you are not measuring before you are not measuring neither you are measuring after you are measuring the change after minus before okay and you are seeing whether that data is normally distributed or not more or less it's okay compare means paired sample t test variable now two variables are there pair one variable one of uh, before variable two is after gives you this result here the test statistics t value is minus 0 0.655 and p value is 0 0.529 now obviously this 0 0.529 is much higher than 0 0.05 so we have to accept the null hypothesis. Fail to reject the null hypothesis at 5% level. This 5% level you have to mention. Okay, because otherwise they will not be able to understand that how you will get this 0 0.05. Okay, so you have to mention that. So therefore, there is no significant difference between the mean iron contents in the fruits after applying the farm yarn manual. Now, there can be a policy. It can lead to a policy that whatever farm yarn manure is applied is basically having no impact because before the manure the kind of iron content in 10 fruits were there the same iron content in the 10 fruits the same 10 fruits are there after applying the manure so it's better that you do not apply the manure okay that kind of small policies you can talk about thank you so much uh, this is basically the reference from where I have prepared this and uh, if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Shall I escape this or what? Okay. Yeah, uh, participants, if you have any query, uh, the speaker is here to uh, address your queries. If you have, you, can, you may ask. I think I'm in time. Yeah, yes, of course. See, the most important thing again, I'm telling that it's all your thought process. Okay, these statistical softwares are going to help help you out because here we have taken with 10 values, 12 values, 15 values, 20 values that you can easily calculate in your you know paper and pen with the paper and pen. But once you are uh, using maybe uh, 100, 200, 300 data sets. You cannot do in paper and pen. Okay, so in that case, very quickly you can get all this kind of uh, results. One thing is that your understanding is important, your thought process is important because you have to interpret. It will give you the result. And we sometimes we tell that if you put your biodata, some statistical uh, result will come out, but you cannot interpret that. Okay, so for interpretation, you have to understand the logic and the structure. Otherwise, it is only about the application. So I need to know the structure because I want to apply them properly and clearly. That is the intention. Okay, for that, whatever is required, that we have to understand. Okay. And it takes a lot of time to talk about the hypothesis and all because we, we have just covered one part of hypothesis. There are several other parts of hypothesis testing problems in there. So there's, if, if it is completely normal, then you have a J distribution, normal, standard normal distribution. This is another test. If you have, you can have ANOVA also separately. That is also important. You have F test also, that is also important. But it takes time. You have so many variations in T itself. Okay, 
starting from the easiest one to the most complex complex in the sense most practical one because real life is you know on the way very different from theoretical life but i guess now you are a bit familiar with you know the process because i have to show the process that how to conduct a t test in using spss okay if that is also uh, i mean a bit clear then i think half the purpose is solved yeah that's a big question if you want to use spss personally you have to purchase it otherwise university library is having spss software you can go you can use their computer and can access that spss is good good software r is also good r is uh, free you can freely download that but this is not free No question. I think uh, you're bored enough. So I guess no question. So okay. Uh, so if there is no question, even if there is any question after that, you may. Uh, I mean, the participants are always welcome to post them uh, via WhatsApp group or email. Uh, we'll transfer or forward them to the uh, corresponding speakers. So uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation and. Uh, for conducting such a uh, I mean, nice presentation and uh, this uh, <clears throat> wonderful session. Now, I would like to uh, request our uh, coordinator, Dr. Alok Roy, to represent a, a memento of respect. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you all. And on the best.